And welcome back to this presentation of the ACC on ESPN. A showery night in the state of South Carolina, but Dabo Sweeney was the fastest man down the hill after touching Howard's ruck. He sprinted out to midfield. He's with Maria Taylor on the sidelines. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, Coach, all right, the last time we saw your team, an unexpected loss to Syracuse. What's the challenge you gave them tonight before this game? It's back to work. Let's play Clemson football. It's all about tonight. It's all about that windshield. What's next? Play good ball. Thanks, Coach. Chris? Uh, he's fired up. Yeah, his Tiger has won the toss and deferred, so Georgia Tech will get the football first. Alex Spence, the kicker who's had to fight to keep his job. He's been shaky on field goals. Nathan Cottrell at the goal line for the Ramblin' Wreck. Here we go. So this rainy night. Kickoff taken by Cottrell at the nine. And navigates his way up near the 25-yard line. And now we'll get Saquon Marshall in this option offense to work. He's 5'10", 180 pounds as a junior. Guy that uh, really this year has taken over for Justin Thomas. As we talk about, he's got to be able to attack the edges with his speed and quickness against this defense and be very, very consistent with the sloppy conditions on those run reads. We're in a lot of triple option. Not just pitching the ball, but on those dive reads, you got to be able to make sure you're reading big Dexter Lawrence and Christian Wilkins well, too. Trevante Benson, number 30, is the featured and busiest running back, and he's got the first carry of the night. But this Clemson defense well-schooled at stopping the option. See if they can get Benson and Searcy loose, the Chick-fil-A impact players. Yeah, you've got to get Trevante Benson established in the middle to get this offense going. He's number 30. They call him the B-back, but he's a full-back. And then you'll see Quay Searcy. I think he's the best with the ball in his hands. I'm missing Christian Wilkins in the interior. And Dorian O'Daniel has, as Chris mentioned earlier, just a great career over the last three years. And been able to not just make tackles, but a lot of tackles for a loss against this offense. Now that front has eaten up the blockers in recent years. It's Benson again breaking tackles and picks up yardage out across the 30 before Kendall Joseph stopped him. It'll be third down. And that, that, that's exactly what they need to do is get a push on that right side with double teams. And you're going to... Enjoy watching Shamir Devine, number 71, the right guard. We'll be talking about him a lot tonight. He's a 6'7", 380-pound right guard who's going to be going up against those big guys in the inside. That time, he got the best of them. There's a test for the O-line now on third and two. Benson, for a third time, plows straight ahead, and they do move the sticks in the opening series. Yeah, they've got big splits, which you see every week with Georgia Tech. They're trying to spread that defense out. Clemson walking those linebackers up in tight. This is old school football. If you've been watching games all day today, see Paul Johnson. I mean, his offense, it's old school. And they're going to run the football and take three or four downs to get 10 yards a lot of times. Thank goodness old Paul Johnson's gotten a raincoat. He was out there in the warm-ups with, uh, without proper rain gear. He was like a drowned rat, but now he's got... A water repellent jacket on and, and by the nose of the football. Yeah, they do move it. That's a you know what? After the way the last two years have gone, to start the game in Death Valley with a first down, he's got to feel pretty good about that. And a big thing with this offense is they've got to stay on schedule. Can't afford to have mistakes or a holding call, false start. They need to be at first and ten, second and seven, third and three. That's their that's their wheelhouse and where they want to be. Yeah, they're bound to play better. They've been held under 100 yards rushing each of the last two games against Clemson. No losses. And this is another carry. Ball is out. Benson coughed it up, and the Tigers recover. It's Van Smith. Not the last fumble we'll see tonight. Uh, what a hit that time by number 34, Kendall Joseph. You and I were talking before we came on the air with this offense. How many times can we maybe see the ball on the ground? Watch 34 here. Right there. That, that hit right there. Jarred the ball loose. And then watch 34 right there. Hits him. Ball hits the football. Ball's on the ground. None of the Georgia Tech players even realize the ball is on the ground. And Clemson takes advantage of an early opportunity in plus territory. Tenth fumble as Johnson gets after his B back right there. Only the third fumble recovery this season for the Tigers who take over in plus territory. Tavian Feaster is the back to the right of Bryant. Play action, first down throw. It's Deion Kane to catch on the far side against Syracuse. They came out throwing early to set up the run. This is Benson going to the sideline, frustrated, but watch Paul Johnson come in there. He lets him know how frustrated he is as well. He was trying to get away from the coach. It yeah. did not work. 
On second and three, Bryant again pitches far side. Kane breaks free. Deion Kane heading for the end zone as the Tigers cash in the takeaway. Thirty-eight yards as he broke through the tackle of Stent Durham and took it to the house. A nightmare for the Yellow Jackets at the beginning. You know, on a sloppy night, people wonder how the offense will always prevail and handle the conditions. I'm a big believer in a passing game. How the secondary reacts to receivers is also a big issue. So Kendall Joseph forces the fumble of Benson. And the Tigers in two quick passes convert it to seven points. Bryant to Kane quickly. Tigers on top. Yellow Jackets said they had to be poised, not get overhyped, start fast, and not fall behind. That was what Juan Marshall said. Well, guess what? The offense will get the football for their second possession down 7 0 after the fumble and touchdown pass. Spence booted away. Patro will again track this one down and return it from the five. And it's going to be somersaulted down at the 16 yard line. A strong hit by A.J. Terrell, the corner on special teams. That's a great hit. Go back to the touchdown. They blitz both their linebackers, and they play man-to-man -man across the board. That's risky because there's nobody behind this, the corner, Steph Durham. He's out there very tentative, one-on-one. -on -one. Watch the conditions. Sloppy surface, comes up tentative. He's had tackling issues coming into this game, and Deion Kane on his own can make big plays, and what a way for Clemson and Kelly Bryant to come back into action after the Syracuse Lost. And now the crowd all revved up. Tech from the 16. Again, it's Benson who's carried the ball all four times so far. Austin Bryant hit it behind the line. Have a look at the kickoff return yeah, here. How about AJ Terrell? You mentioned going down there as a true freshman. You got to take advantage of your opportunities, right? Up and over. Natural lucky to get up from that hit. That's great effort, hustle. Anytime you keep them inside the 20. It's a big play by special teams. And we'll see Terrell at corner because Mark Field is out with a foot injury suffered in practice, and Marcus Edmond is still out injured. Marshall on the pitch. This is Clinton Lynch is a speedy back, cannot get going. Hit by Van Smith, who recovered the fumble, third and long. They've been running a lot in the middle, in the middle, in the middle, and eventually they're going to get to the outside. Brent Venable saying, we cannot get out flank. How about Dorian O'Daniel? We talked about it at the beginning of the broadcast. Not only is he forced to pitch from the quarterback, he helps chase down the ball carrier along with Van Smith. Great play there by that Clemson defense. They do not want to let Georgia Tech get to the outside with that running game. Tech is a great third down team because they have the fewest average yards needed on third down. Just five on average. They're not a very good third and 12 offense. Marshall pressured immediately. Back pedals to his goal line and fires incomplete. A high throw over the head of Brad Stewart, but he was pressured immediately by Bryant. Yeah, just a mix up up front on the offensive line. It's hard enough to execute when you're trying to go up against this kind of defense, but watch this guy right here. How great has it been this year to see Austin Bryant back, healthy, playing at 100%, wearing the jersey number seven, makes him look even leaner and faster. That time, poor Taquan Marshall didn't have any chance at all. Right side of the line on a breakdown there on third and 12. True freshman punter Presley Harbin back in his home state. He's a rugby style punter. He gets a good boot away, and Ray Ray McLeod driven back inside the 35. Dodges a man, but it'll be spun down right there. No yards on the return. Good coverage by the Yellow Jackets. Zach Matthews making the tackle. Second possession for Clemson. He lead it 7 0. National championship in three and a half decades. Marked by the tombstone. Outside the practice facility every time you beat a ranked team you get a tombstone But they went extra nice by beating Alabama for the national championship. That's they sure they, they sure good Expensive right? looking tombstone Look nice So the Tigers who struck quickly Bryant to Kane Two plays and a touchdown the first possession take over in this driving rain To the 52 yard punt they're at the 35 Here is Tavian Feaster 
sophomore tailback. Unselfish group of tailbacks. So obviously Travis Etienne will see the dynamic freshman. Fans just demanding that he get the ball more. But Feaster is a big playback yeah. as well. Two things they told us. More tempo and taking more shots downfield tonight. There's a keeper by Bryant. The design run which signals that his ankle must be feeling pretty good. And he scoots up near first down yardage. That's exactly right. I, I can't wait to watch him move around. It's up to this point. He looks great. We all wondered how would that ankle hold up. Injured against Wake Forest was far, far below 100% in the carrier dome. Really couldn't protect himself, couldn't run at all. They didn't call a single design run in that game until he was knocked out third quarter. They need about the length of a football here in third down. It's Feaster, and they will move the sticks. Kelly Bryant this year was a question mark when this season started. And if you go back to early in the year when they were tested by Auburn, remember when he took a shot and left the game? And I remember the reaction because we had him a week or two later with Louisville. And the players and the coaches said, we learned a lot about Kelly Bryant that we didn't even know how tough of a guy he is. So he does have that earlier this year to fall back on. Bryant wanted to throw from the pocket, now escapes. And the Tigers fans very, very pleased to see him show that explosiveness. It looks to be back, and he moves the ball into Tech territory. Well, he, if you look at him over the, the first year that he's taken over, 6'4", 220, very, very different runner than Taj Boyd and Deshaun Watson. He's powerful, and he can make big plays. I mean, he can go. He can go 50, 60 yards when he's healthy. He's got a good pain threshold. You talked about getting knocked out in the Auburn game. Remember, he came right back the next drive. They went yeah. down and scored after it looked like he might be out for a while. Yeah. He keeps it. And the Tech defense strings it out and drops him for a big loss. Back in Clemson territory. That's Corey Griffin, the safety. Yeah, that, that is a great play. Kind of the outside. He's, he's lined up way out here, but does a good job of reading and reacting to the play. And then ends up coming up and making a play right there. He's able to get to the inside of Ray Ray McLeod before McLeod could make the block. And I think that's just because of the instincts and his ability to come up and make a, make a big play there in the open field. That's defense. Eager to get off the field. Tigers need nine on third down. Bryant from the pocket flips it short to Feaster. Can he make men miss? Yes, hammers ahead. First down inside the 40. They left them alone there. Yeah, and see, that's the area that Georgia Tech, if they're going to compete tonight, they've got to get Clemson off the field if they get him to third down. It's the area that Ted Roos Bunch has improved the most. Fifth in the nation on third down defense coming into tonight. They got 13 yards in that third and nine. Now a first down throw. Well, he had a short completion. He just is in rhythm. He, he looks really good right now, whether he's running the ball. Just, there's just a look of a quarterback, the command that he has, running the football, making reads, distributing the ball, throwing the ball accurately. McLeod got nine yards there, and now we do see Travis Etienne, the true freshman in the game, number nine. They give it to him. Look out. Loses the ball. A turnover, and Tech recovers it. That's Durham, who gave up the touchdown on the missed tackle, who comes up with the first takeaway for Chris, Tech. Chris, it looked like Antonio Simmons got his hand on the ball. 90, I thought at first maybe he dropped it, but I think Simmons, 93, reaches back. See him right there. See if he reaches with his arm, and maybe, yep, he got his hand on it and knocked that ball loose. Much needed takeaway for Georgia Tech. They'll go back to work down 7 0. Tiger's second drive ends with the ETN fumble, and Georgia Tech takes over at the 26. It is a sloppy night, a little bit deceptive. The, the high and wide shots for TV don't indicate just how hard it's raining and how wet this field is. Benson barrels ahead. Kervante Benson in a race. And finally, tracked down inside the 10 as the Tech offense breaks a big one. Well, the linebackers ended up overrunning this. 
you see him on, on both both sides of the linebackers. Watch 34 this time. Joseph kind of gets caught up in traffic. The safety's running to out to the pitch. And then you get Benson, who's a 10-6 guy in high school. He's got speed, even though he's a fullback. He almost takes that all the way to the end zone. Yeah, it took it 65 yards. He was an A-back, then kind of grew into the fullback role. But you're right, he's got some quicks. Kenny Cooper, the center, good job of getting to that second level of the Clemson defense. It's the longest play the Tigers defense has allowed this year. They hadn't allowed anything longer than a 45-yard run. On first down, they hammer Benson again, and he powers to the five. Chris, watch the double team here on the left side. Parker Braun is over there. Good push. Lee, the left tackle. Look at that push right there. That, that's exactly what they need to do, which they've not been able to do the last two years against Clemson. They've lost that battle, those double teams. Clemson's been able to win. Bring those linebackers up. They've been running into a wall. We're getting a little bit of a dent there and giving these backs a little bit of room to work with. Nine plays, seven have been Benson runs. Marshall doesn't have a keeper yet. A whistle before and Paul Johnson, who often does venture out on the field, wants to talk about it. He knows the importance of this series as the Jackets threaten to tie the game. Second and goal when you come back. Dr. Pepper Championship Drive update. Number 10, Oklahoma trailing Texas Tech 6-0 until Baker Mayfield find C.D. Lamb. The Sooners had a brief 7-6 lead, but Texas Tech just scored up 13-7 on ESPN2 or ABC, depending on your location. Chris, Herbie, Maria, back to you. Yeah, I see we'll keep you busy. It'll be a scoring fest tonight in Norman. Meanwhile, in two plays, the Jackets have raced 69 yards to a second and goal. Hammer the B-back again. That time the Tigers all over Benson. J.D. Davis and Isaiah Simmons stopped him. Third down. Kind of anticipated that they might try to get the ball to the perimeter. They've had a lot of success and they've been working it up into the middle of those double teams. Letting Benson follow the guard and the tackle left and right. What happens, and we heard Kristen Wilkins tell us this this week, the challenging thing in defending this offense is you start to want to do someone else's job to help out. You have to keep doing your assignment. Because as soon as you get out of gap, uh, wrong, get into the wrong gap, they can capitalize on it. It's a big moment here, third and goal. Marshall hasn't carried it yet. Looking to throw, now trying to make something happen. He'll be sacked. Austin Bryant again. It's fourth down. Well, he had J.J. Green is exactly who he's looking at. Watch Green just sneak out off of the action. He goes option. And by attacking, look at Green sitting back there. Nobody picked him up. That's the play that they have to make. But because Dorian O'Daniel got in and the pressure got to him, he just didn't have time. He could have shot put it that for a touchdown to J.J. Green. You can file that away for later. In the meantime, Brenton King has come on because Sean Davis is out for the year with a torn ACL. And he's 4 for 4 in his brief career so far. Make it 5 for 5 as he knocks through the 25-yarder. So the fumble recovery and the 66-yard field goal drive have cut in to that Clemson lead. But Paul Johnson frustrated. He wanted to get back and, and get even on that touchdown right there. In, in leading up to that drive, if you, you looked where Clemson was starting uh, the field position with the turnover and the way the game has started, they were right around midfield at their own 45. Georgia Tech starting back at, inside their own 20 on average. So that big run by Benson, if nothing else, they flipped the field, they get some points, and now they can try to push Clemson's own offense back and try to make Kelly Bryant have to work deeper from his own territory. That's been a big advantage for Clemson. You talked about Christian Wilkins and all the other Tigers defenders who've had success defending this, but they admit it's just a grinding play-in, play-out challenge. It's, it's just kind of doing your job consistently. It takes some of the fun out of defense. It does, especially a night like this defense they just love to turn it loose it's, it's rainy it's muddy this is fun for the defense but the assignment if, if, what happens is a big play happens you start to do the other defense alignment assignment and, and and you bust a gap and that's where the marshall can take advantage of it Brenton king to put it away and this is etn the freshman who fumbled earlier travis trying to flash the speed Holds on to the ball, the gang tackled as a couple flags come in at the 30-yard line. Yeah, he's got a face mask there. He pulled down on that hard. 
And that'll move the ball up around the 45 yard line. So Clemson, excellent field position after the and penalty. There they go again. Great field position. Pretty, pretty, pretty fun to call plays for Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott. Midfield, close to midfield. You kick off week seven NFL Sunday with Sunday NFL countdown on ESPN, 10 a.m. Eastern time tomorrow. And on Monday Night Football, Denver Broncos and the AFC West leading Kansas City Chiefs. It's Chiefs, your ball, can bro. anybody stop the Chiefs? They look An great. arrowhead. They look great. High snap. Bryant looks to throw and threw it over the head. Had a man, DeAndre Overton, open. Now, Ted, I'm a little messed up there. Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator from Georgia Tech, came in with a plan of saying, let's make Kelly Bryant throw to beat us. Number one, he's able to handle the snap, which is a good job, gets the fake in. But Ted Roof's leaving guys on islands, and they're, and they're not necessarily holding up. Durham that time lets, lets Overton get right behind him, but Bryant unable to make the throw. And Bryant took a brief look downfield, now tries to scramble once backwards and will be dropped after a short gain there by Antonio Simmons, the defensive end. Yeah, we've talked tonight about Ted Ruth, the defensive coordinator. This is a different team with Georgia Tech. There he is right there. I, I, I've been impressed with, they have a veteran secondary. You've got Lawrence Austin and Lance Austin, the twins. Corey Griffin is back there. A.J. Gray, Step Durham. Those guys have played a lot of football. It's made this defense better as a group. And they're willing to take more chances and play more man coverage. A pretty good third down defense as well. Clemson needing seven here. Bryant on the rollout, throws short, and the catch made. Nice hands catch by Trevion Thompson. It's a first down. How about that? that well played against the best, one of the better defensive backs from Georgia Tech, Austin. Looks nice in rhythm, rolling out, which is where he's been very effective. Showed no signs at all with the ankle. Tigers three for three on third down. And now they feed C.J. Fuller, the veteran of that running back group, for a short gain. Fuller, the junior, has had to accept a role here. He's kind of a mentor to some of the younger backs, very useful in that way. It's complicated to play running back in this offense. Tony Allen was telling us yeah. all the responsibilities you have as a pass protector, well, an said, adjuster. I want you to think like a quarterback, but play like a running back. He wants you to understand every aspect, especially in the pass protection. Now on the pop pass, coming around is Amari Rogers, and the true freshman who has a big future, the coaches think, is right near the sticks. He'll be just a bit short. With Deion Kane, Hunter Renfro, and Ray Ray McLeod are their top three receivers, but you, you look at that next group of receivers and they are incredibly talented and in really good position for the future. T. Higgins we'll see later tonight, number five. Just saw Amari Rogers. Great group that's coming up, that next wave. Ryan looking to throw on third and one, throw sideline, and the first catch of the night for Hunter Renfro. He was such a clutch third down receiver. That's like having your blanket. You know, you, you just always know you can count on Hunter Renfro, especially on third down. And the timing between those two is very evident that they put a lot of time in in the offseason to be able to make those throws almost with their eyes closed with Bryant throwing that football Good to Renfro. Good matchup tonight against Lawrence Austin, the alpha of that tech defense. That uh, is a matchup that, you know, Renfro told us he looked forward to because Austin's the guy when they played Miami He was on Barrios the slot receiver the top receiver yep. for Miami and he tries to shut down Renfro tonight Well, he's known for his physicality and run support, but he does a great job of being multi uh, Successful and being a great DB because of his ability to cover two five nine 187 pounds They think it's a choice go down the middle touchdown Milan Richard Touchdown reception for Richard Bryant's second touchdown toss tonight. That one covered 20 yards. Another quick drive by Clemson. That's the problem with settling for three if you're in close, if you're Georgia Tech, because the Tigers, they figure to get seven. 
When you have a reputation to run the football, run the football, just a little bit of action here brings both the linebackers up, and here's Richard who sneaks behind him, and he, there's nobody there. The defensive back, Durham, tries to stay to the outside, but there's nobody in the middle. Once the two linebackers shot up the middle, an easy throw, easy read for Kelly Bryant, puts it right on the money for Mylon Richard and a touchdown. Not the kind of athlete that Jordan Leggett was last year, but in recent games, Kirk, they've begun to involve Richard, even though he's a big 255-pounder, pretty good athlete to get downfield. And in this offense, he's he's a big part. They, you know, he's maybe not Jordan Leggett, but he's a guy that can catch the ball, and with his size, he could be a matchup concern for defensive backs. That time, he didn't have to have blazing speed, but he got in the right place, and Bryant found him for the touchdown. His 13th catch is his first career touchdown. That's got to feel pretty good for the big fella. In the final two minutes of the first quarter, the lead up to 11. Death Valley is rocking as Cottrell comes up to take the short kickoff from the 12. Hard hit right there. Ball comes out. It's a scramble for it. Chad Smith. Special teams, the backup linebacker, forced the fumble, which the Yellow Jackets recovered. June, the top receiver on this team, coming up with the fumble recovery. It's the soggy Taco Bell student section. Taco Bell, a proud partner of the college football playoff. The tailgating was kind of disrupted, but the student section, they, they will bring it strong. Halloween costumes yeah, I mean, tonight. It, it get to a point when it rains so much and so hard, you're just like, all right, it's gonna, <laughs> we're wet. We're wet. What are we going to do? Enjoy the game. Marshall, this is his very first keeper tonight on their 12th play, a short game. Down to Maria Taylor. Well, Chris, right now, Paul Johnson, he's been very aggressive in getting after challenging his offensive line. He even asked them if they were scared of this Clemson <laughs> defense and really trying to challenge them to come out and get more push for their backs in this run game. I like that, Maria, that he's trying to challenge him just because of the way the last two years have gone. It off to a pretty good start by comparison up front. The tackles have been the trouble spot for this offensive line. Jahazel Lee slides over, starts at right tackle tonight. And that offensive line is beaten as Wilkins invades the backfield very quickly. Dylan Farrell cleaned it up. And yeah, misread here. This is a read that he should have given. Watch Wilkins. Watch what he does. If he collapses, then you give it. He kind of gives that read like he's going to come down, and then he comes out. Time he fooled Marshall on the read. That's one way you handle big, strong defensive linemen. You read them instead of always having to block them. But that means the quarterback's got to make the proper read to give you a chance. Need seven on this third down. Marshall retreating, and we'll just throw it into the bench. Took a brief look downfield. Felt some pressure, but no chance to make a play. Here comes a punt. I'll tell you, he... The, the highlight of that play, he just threw that away, is my man Brent Venables showing he still has the hands, the former linebacker, all purple. Watch him now. Watch how excited he gets. Ball, ball's loose. Make a play, coach. Watch, watch him. Watch, him. watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Watch his reaction. <laughs> Come on, give it to me. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that's what's up. Yeah. That's a defensive player, coach. Hey, <laughs> Come on. <laughs> His son, his son Jake has better hands than that. He's a linebacker <laughs> at a local high school that Clemson has offered scholarship. Oh, we're going year. to crush him for that. McLeod deep. Harvin is a line drive boot on the bounce sideways, and McLeod just wisely backpedals. And on this soggy pitch, it'll roll dead at the 21 with 18 seconds left in the first quarter. So Kelly Bryant has shown no effects of that ankle injury. He's throwing the ball very well tonight. Eight of nine to start this game. Over 100 yards, a couple touchdowns. He's only had to carry it four times. But think about where, where, where Clemson was the last time we watched him. On a Friday night against Syracuse on the road. Wasn't their best game. They would be the first ones to tell you that. It's our first time to really see them since that game. So far, if you're a Clemson fan, you got to be pretty excited with the way they've responded to that, that loss. It's a group that's not used to losing. If you're a junior at Clemson, so many juniors in this team, that was your third career loss. Feaster turns the corner, and a flag is down as he's dropped for an eight-yard game. Think about that. It's your first true road loss of your career. Offense number 87. 
at the distance of the goal. First down. DJ Greenley, a backup tight end, is flagged for the hold. I, I always look forward to having a chance to talk with the Clemson coaches and players. And Christian Wilkins is always entertaining, and he, he he's very engaging. And he said, you know, we're not really not used to, to yeah. losing games here. And and uh, you know, this is what we do: windshield mentality. What's next? You know, all that, which is what Dabo Swinney has created that kind of culture. But man, again, very impressed last year after they lost to Pitt. And what we've seen in this first quarter tonight after their loss uh, a couple weeks ago against Syracuse. Tigers 139 yards in the first quarter lead at 14-3. End of one in Death Valley. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. For the second quarter at Clemson, Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart in this presentation of the ACC on ESPN. For Georgia Tech, it's just about elimination game if they take a second conference loss Miami hard fought win at North Carolina leading the coastal division Clemson in control the Atlantic for a big game at NC State next week pin back now Fabian Feaster first down carry after the penalty offense has just an embarrassment of riches with Feaster and ETN in that backfield to go along with Kelly Bryant in the running game and We've seen them really throw more than than running, but it's they have answers. You watch college offenses; sometimes they look a little one-dimensional. This is not one of those offenses. And Bryant again briefly looks downfield, takes off, and is hammered. Met right away by Victor Alexander. Really spread the ball around Kirk to that point. That last drive, seven different players had a touch in the eight plays. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that, that's that's when I think Dabo Sweeney and. And Jeff Scott and Tony Elliott, that's what they want to see. They want to see distribution, different people getting involved, and it makes it so hard on a defense when you're not having obvious tendencies with who's getting the football. Why has been good in third down, and Tech has not been able to get off the field. Third and 13, they flip it short to Feaster, and he is tackled right there. That's a nice play. Tackled by Jalen Johnson, the backup safety, and they force a punt. Yes. You kind of assume that on a, a third and long situation, screen or draw, good job around to the football, nice play in the open field, but they had other Georgia Tech defenders over there. We talked a lot that this has been an area that's become a strength for them. But like you said, Chris, up to that third down, Clemson was four for four tonight. Johnson beating the block, nice tackle, and for the first time, Will Spires is back. Gets a boot away. And driven back. Stewart makes a man miss. Has to earn about four yards, but the Jackets do set up a pretty good field position at the 43. Van Smith made the tackle. Taquan Marshall has been kept in check tonight. Steve back to work down 11. Tech's last win here was also Dabo Sweeney's first game as Clemson head coach. Tommy Bowden fired, the receiver coach elevated. He's talked about that crazy chaotic week with us when you suddenly are elevated a head coach, and he said, of all opponents to get ready for Georgia <laughs> right. Tech right. in your first game? Oh, man. Come a long way since then, hasn't he? He has beaten them in the last four visits here, and he's come a long way in, in every way. It's Marshall. Wanted to pitch it, but again, it's Austin Bryant closing him down. Yeah, it's been all about assignment football, whether it was 10 years ago when he first started or tonight. This is taking the dive, the quarterback right there, Dorian Daniel chasing it out, and then having somebody on the pitch. That's great assignment football. And this is what you don't want to do when Wilkins and Joseph get into the same gap. That's where you have to be careful. You have two guys in one gap, it frees up another gap, and next thing you know, there goes Cravante Benson for a big game. Marshall, though, averages about five yards a carry. He's got one net yard on four rushes tonight. He can change the game in a hurry. Low crouch. Hit drops. Austin Bryant has been a nightmare. There is a flag down on the play right at the line of scrimmage in the near side. back five yards just so difficult against the defense this good that you just highlighted it to give away five yards you can and begin behind the sticks you, here. you just can't 
I mean, Georgia Tech right now, and they go in and, and unless things change. They, Paul Johnson's got to be talking the, to the, this offense about we cannot self-destruct. Lining up wrong, forcing a timeout when they had some momentum. False starts, mistakes. They pitch it to Cottrell around the end, and he is swarmed again by O'Daniel. As we check in with Cassidy. Thanks, Chris. AT&T Field Pass number 13, Virginia Tech hosting Duke and Josh Jackson. Finds Sean Savoy. Ho Hokies up 17 to 3, looking to hand the Blue Devils their fifth straight loss after a faux and O start. Chris, Herbie, Maria, back to you. Cassidy, thank you. Hokies head down to yeah, Rock to take on Miami next week. Big one. You know, that, that false start gets you to second and long. You run the football for no gain, and here they are again. Third down and forever with this offense. It just doesn't work. One for four and third down. Marshall. Rolls to his left again doesn't see anybody open and Trey Lamar the linebacker closes him down fourth down It just aren't there aren't a lot of receivers Into progression he rolls left when he rolls to his left. He's got two receivers out there He's got one that gets behind coverage, but because of the pressure that eventually got there to him by Trey Lamar just not enough people to attack and kind of flood the zone to that left side. Rain comes down even heavier now as Presley Harvin drives it. And they've got the sure-handed returner Renfro back there who just watches it roll dead at about the 20. Let's take a break. It's coming down now. We got Michaela, Carson, Camden, Madden, Brown. Kids of our I buddy love it. Kyle Brown. He says they can go to bed now. All right. Be good with them <laughs> Rest of you, please stay with us. Green, kind of hang in there. There, you see that girl falling asleep in the rain here. Got a game going on. You're right, though. The, yeah, the paddle may be needed soon by the Tiger. There, it has begun to rain even harder now. And here's a first down keeper for Bryant. And he kind of dances free, hit from behind, but not until he crosses the 25. Boy, he looks good. I mean, it, you have a, a gimpy ankle the last time you played, and they've had some time off to recover. He's had his treatment, done everything he needs to do, but come back in this these conditions, this kind of field, up to this point has been outstanding. Yeah, he's 9 for 10 passing, carried it 6 times for 21 yards. They'll lay the hand up. Adam Choice, and Choice breaks free. He says, don't forget about me and this Clemson tailback rotation busts it into tech territory. You're going to bring around the guard and the tight end and watch this Georgia Tech defense. They just overrun it to the outside. It was Step Durham again, just going too far outside. Nobody had run support. And it's one of Choice's longer runs of the year. They're playing the tempo after the first down and the cloud in heavy traffic. It's a short gain. You would never know, other than the one fumble earlier by ETN, that, that this is brutal weather. Because this offense is clicking and executing. Great point. And until that moment when Deion Kane just steps a little offside. Kane earlier caught the touchdown pass. Let's see. He been flawless up to this point and Dabo just dripping they crazy by this little mental errors when they told me and you and our crew you know he's frustrated don't do it right about, in front of the coach he, Dad was about five right right there. On the yeah. side but they told us tempo was going to be a bigger emphasis tonight this is choice again Bryant bobbled the snap just able to get a control of it and hand it off when they told us that tempo was a big emphasis in the, the last couple weeks and they're off week and just getting ready that told me Okay, we're going to be incredibly aggressive with how we're going to attack Georgia Tech, not only with tempo to get them on their heels and tire them out, but with play calling. We're going to go after the Georgia Tech defense. Fuller motions back in on third and nine. Now comes out of the backfield, and Bryant loops it downfield over the head of McLeod, who was very well covered there by Lance Austin. See, that's where you're going to start to see the conditions come into play as the ball's downfield, especially when it's a kind of a back shoulder throw, the receiver and the defensive back trying to adjust with those puddles in their down by their feet. I mean, it, it, unless the ball is thrown right in your kind of in your catch radius, 
it's going to be very, very challenging for these guys to make plays downfield. It's going to be more of a short, intermediate passing game. Ryan is a very effective passer downfield. Am I surprised if you check the stats? He's extremely efficient throwing beyond 15 yards downfield. Spires comes in, just hits a little sand wedge up in the air, and the fair catch is made there by Brad Stewart. 8.36 before halftime. Tech back to work down 11. Well, Kirk, the mood for Chris Felica, the Bear, couldn't mean any better. But 3-0. 3-0 <laughs> oh, oh with his picks. He's got the oh. Affleck trivia question. Just trying to ride the he, wave. He wasn't oh, interested that. in the Michigan State Northwestern yeah, game we at were, all. Today. We were watching that one intently down there in the truck. Last week, of course, we saw Clemson two weeks ago, right? The last time we saw the play, they lost at unranked Syracuse. For tonight's Affleck trivia question, who was the last reigning national champion to lose two games in the regular season? For mm, it's a good one. Give us a minute now. Don't rush us. First down, Benson, and the one big play wow. is stopped by Wilkins, who just darted in there. Yeah, slanting. Brent Venables slanting this defensive line against his option look, and he just goes right through this gap. There's no way that Devine, 6'7", 280 pounds. Look at him right there. He's just, he just, he just a step slow. 6'7", 280 against Christian Wilkins. He's going to beat you with quickness to the gap every time. I'm trying to pay attention to the game, and I'm thinking about that trivia question. That's a good athlete. Again, Benson bounces off a man and shows some toughness and makes it a third and four. Leland Farrell finally stopped him. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm trying to think who that might be. It's, look at the pass plays. This is Georgia Tech's offense. This is what they do. Paul Johnson's been running this offense. He comes up with answers, wants to be right where he is here, third and four. They have zero. Yards passing tonight. But they average less than five completions per game. Marshall 0 for 2. What they call him third and four. Nothing. Swarmed in the backfield. Bryant and Trey Lamar grab the quarterback. It's fourth down. Boy, Austin Bryant is able to do it again. Brent Venables challenged his guys this week. If Marshall make sure he's okay. Challenged his guys this week to, on the back side. We've got to be able to make plays. Backside players be able to stay on your feet, make plays. You can't get cut blocked. And the last uh, in that sequence of plays, we saw Wilkins and this time Bryant being able to come in from behind to make the play. And bad news for Tech is that Taquan Marshall, who took a while to get up, is limping heavily as he comes to the sideline. Third straight three and out for that offense, but that is the main concern for Georgia Tech at the moment as McLeod is back to receive the punt of Harvin. Again, it's a line drive, tough to field, and it's just going to bounce out of bounds. Very effective punt again out at 29. Chris, this is nasty. You can see the hit from behind forces him down by Bryant, but then Niles Pinckney, 44, watch him hit him and drive him back. Mm, that left knee. So Halloween night, 7 o'clock Eastern time, the reveal of the college football playoff committee, top 25. By the way, the, the top seed in the initial ranking, says, has never won the national championship. Clemson and Bama occupied those, but of course they flipped and Bama won in 15, Clemson winning last year, but 0 for 3 are the initial top seeds in the playoff rankings. Bryant. Keeper into traffic. Talked to one of the members of that committee, Clemson Athletic Director Dan Radakovich, before the game. Bama idle today, a no brainer number one in those rankings. It's Tuesday night, Tuesday night you, you, you'd like to think that you have an idea the top three Alabama uh, would, would be up there, Georgia would be up there. But that it gets more interesting, doesn't it? It's Bryant with a cushion. The catch is made there, Overton. It'll be third and short. Once the team is trying to work their way back up in to that top, uh, top Ohio four, State top five. Ohio State, Penn State statement. shouldn't drop too far with no. a one-point loss. No. Notre Dame, I think, with their last couple weeks and with one loss, they're helping themselves. Clemson, the only team coming into this week that had three wins over the FPI top 25, losing to unranked Syracuse, but. Bryant trying to escape, does so. First down and more as he scoots out 
And Kelly Bryant's ankle look, if not 100%, very close to it. Sure does. This is Kelly Bryant. This is what he brings to the table. Ability to get outside. This is what Tony Elliott, Jeff Scott love to call. I mean, you have that ability to call quarterback run where you're not looking to pick up just a few yards, but a legitimate plus one puts a lot on the defense to have to account for him. You got 11 now. Brian, a first down throw over the middle, and it's Overton. The talented guy, a future star, says Sweeney, waiting to break out. Maybe down the stretch he could begin to make an impact with this offense. And Simmons almost gets to him from behind. As he's throwing it, he, he gets hit, but he stands in there strong and makes an accurate throw to Overton. ETN in the game, and he darts ahead. Doesn't look like much, but he's so quick, he gets about five. When you add Kelly Bryant into the, this offense this year in their running game, it gets the safeties and the linebackers' attention. Then you have ETN and Feaster. That's what opens up their play action for the big plays downfield because they get so many one-on-one -on -one looks because of their run game. Clemson, as they do so often, trying to add to the lead right before halftime. And Bryant pump fakes, delivers in traffic. If they can get to 21-3, they get the football to begin the second half. It begins to be a huge hill for this methodical offense to climb for Georgia Tech. Cannon Smith, the tight end, just his second catch of the season. Bryant rolling and just has to throw it away. Coverage pressure there. Travis Etienne, the young running back, trying to block for his quarterback. But that's an area he needs a little yeah. work on. Yep, and he'll get that with reps. just want to go back one last thing about Bryant, Chris. As, as a, in college football today, you usually see high-profile guys that leave when they don't get a chance to play right away. He's an example of a guy that's kind of developed, paid his dues, and really impressed with how much poise he's played with this year, being a first-year starter and trying to fill the shoes of Deshaun Watson. And Bryant escapes, slips. A small town guy. He ran an option offense, much like Georgia Tech's his first two years of high school, but then he transferred to a high school that would kind of open it up, let him throw the football, show what he could do. Imagine yeah, imagine that pressure, though. Hey, congratulations, you paid your dues. You're running the offense, and you're filling the shoes of Deshaun Watson. And we just won a national championship last year. They said in spring he was trying to do too much, and they yep. had to talk to him about, just settle down and beat Kelly Bryant. It's working. Bryant fakes the pitch, takes off, navigates his way down inside Woo! the five. Oh, is he pretty? 6-4-2-20, making those kind of moves. A.J. Gray had a, move, had a chance to make a play on him, number five. Little counter right there. How about that move? And then he gets a great block. What great effort by Ray Ray McLeod there to give him another five or seven yards. And first and goal. ETN barrels in. And the Tigers winning the battle up front on both sides. Stretch the lead. Nice 10 play. 71 yard drive a little over three minutes and a little bit of everything on that drive from Clemson too much Kelly Bryan for Tex liking and ETN already his seventh touchdown of his true freshman season that's one of the shortest he's busted off four runs of 50 plus muscles in from just a couple yards out and another look right here 10 carries 13 to 16 through the air we all wondered how Kelly Bryant would look, and it's a great push from that offensive line. Kind of the unsung heroes. We get so mesmerized with the quarterback and the receivers and all the running backs. You forget about the big guys up front doing a great job. Very few mistakes in these conditions by this offense in this first half. Wasn't a great performance by this group against Syracuse in the loss, but you can see the progressive pylon cam a good look at it. They're just driving tech off the ball. I think I think programs that are elite when they have a setback like that, they're they're chomping at the bit to get back on the field. They're, they they want to get back on the field to show that they're better than the way they played that night. And by the way, that was a lot of good Syracuse. And I know Clemson didn't have the fastball that night. But Syracuse deserves a lot of credit for the way they played that Friday. Eric Dungey was terrific. Man, he was that played out of his mind. Dino, well, Dino Babers had his team ready to play that night. You see, it's been a long time 
since Clemson had back-to-back -back losses. That was the end of the 2011 season. Doesn't look like that way tonight. Doesn't look like they're going to lose second time to an unranked team, but we'll get answer from the bear of the Affleck trivia question momentarily. Cottrell penned in along the sidelines, takes it at the six, slips, and gets hammered. Still alive. Cottrell showing a lot of grit as he fights to the 25. And let's get the Affleck trivia question answered now, Bear. For tonight's Affleck trivia question, we asked you that question about losing multiple times to unranked teams, and the answer is 2008 LSU. The defending national champion Tigers lost to unranked Ole Miss and un unranked Arkansas. I almost guessed Elliot. I'm not going to believe me. I, almost I, thought, really guessed. I thought you were going to guess Auburn. That was the answer I was expecting from you guys tonight. Auburn 2010. But when they lost Cam the you following do? You, year. You, you expect us to answer yeah. one way, then go the other of way? Of course. Why would I want to make it easy on you the guys? The tactic. A little head Never the there. obvious yeah. answer. All right. Tech 318. Two timeouts before halftime. Marshall back to throw. Takes a shot downfield and threw it over the head of the A-back, Quay Searcy, who came out of the backfield. That's a shot they had to, had to connect on. Well, they, they come out, and they haven't completed a pass yet tonight, and, and it's it's been a struggle for them in that area. But they throw here on first and ten, right? You're thinking about, you know Dabo Sweeney, like I do, 313, three timeouts. They just stopped the clock on that first down pass. Clemson's thinking trying to get a stop here, get the football back, try to put another score on the board. That's a good matchup, though. Searcy's about 50 pounds lighter than Tanner Muse, the safety who was covering him. And had a beat. Now Marshall, the keeper, and nowhere to go as Dorian O'Daniel swarms it. Maria? Well, Chris, we saw Marshall take a big hit in the last series. He did come over to the sideline, got his left leg checked out and tried to run a little bit more on it. He wasn't limping as much and told the trainers that he was OK, but he was certainly affected by it on the sidelines. He had massive flexibility to, to oh avoid God. a knee injury, and then yeah. he was bent back in the replay we showed you. Well, he come out, and, and, and Tech knew they had to start fast. Take care of the football. That that didn't happen. Fighting uphill, and I thought was the key moment of the first half for them, Kurt. They got down inside the five yard line. You pointed out kind of a misalignment. Johnson had to spend a timeout, and it just blew the momentum of the drive. They had to settle for three. Kill the momentum. Also had Clemson a little bit on their heels, adjusting to what had just happened after the big run by Benson. But they've also had just miscues. They, they just have not been able to get on track. And the one way to really put Paul Johnson's offense at a disadvantage is to get the lead on them, make them play catch up. And that's exactly what this Clemson offense has now been able to do. That's what they've done the last couple years. So Johnson after the first down misfire, throwing the ball, no gain on second down. Another third and long for this option offense. Marshall pressured immediately by O'Daniel, throws it complete to Ricky June, but he'll lose yardage. Top receiver on this team, well covered. Ryan Carter is there, and then Kendall Joseph, the backer, made the tackle. And Clemson uses that second timeout. You just knew after that first play that was a pass and incompletion, and Dabo Sweeney looked at that clock and said, we got a chance here to be able to get the ball back. And this is a long throw, and a lot of Clemson defenders there just waiting to kind of get in and have a chance to make the play on Ricky June. Finally complete a pass, but lose six yards. And you're exactly right. Clemson is Paul Johnson, kind of a, a wry smile. Nothing really has gone right. The one big 65-yard run by Carbante Benson, the bright spot this first half. But they have been manhandled up front by the Clemson front. Harbin been an effective punter will try to drive it away from McLeod. It's a higher boot. McLeod comes up, still lets it bounce out of bounds at the 36, 2.52 to go. So we talked about the very busy late afternoon window with Ohio State rallying, Penn State missing some chances to ice that game, and JT Barrett brilliant on the 18 point comeback. Georgia just clobbering Florida as the dysfunctional Gators program just maybe hits a yeah. new low this year. Yeah, big win by Georgia in a rivalry game. The TCU game was incredible to watch. What's going on in Ames, Look Iowa? The defense Matty for the Campbell Cyclones. playing defense. They got some big games coming up. They control their own destiny. 
They've already knocked off TCU and Oklahoma in the Big 12. And they got Oklahoma State in a couple weeks in Ames. Kane on the bubble screen held up briefly, but his escapes and knocked down after a four yard gain. One game we didn't talk about was the Ohio State Penn State game. Boy, Penn State could not have started that game any better with Saquon Barkley and in control of the game for the most part. But JT Barrett in Ohio State, big comeback. I think he completed his last 16 passes. Incredible. It was 13 to 13 in the fourth quarter. AJ Gray, the junior safety, part of that starting secondary, favoring the right arm as he trots off. Clemson was still one timeout to use. You got the feeling that if they get a chance to get the ball to Deion Kane downfield, if he's if he's one on one with Step Durham, they're going to eventually take a shot and try to get him that ball. They fake it to Fuller, and they do take a downfield shot to Kane. It's broken up. That was good coverage by Durham. Crowd wants a flag, but we called it, Kirk. That was the matchup they spotted. Yeah, I mean, they they, they always like to just. They've been attacking with the run game, intermediate passes, and then they'll just remind you that if you leave him one on one, he's this year's Mike Williams. Pretty aggressive de defense there by Durham. Dave Kataya gives the thumbs up. Good coverage. He's, he's a skilled cover guy. Had the missed tackle on Kane of the touchdown of the first possession. So Bryant heaves it downfield over Renfro's head. Tigers being very aggressive, trying to deliver what could be the knockout punch if they can get the 28-3 before halftime. And great separation there by Hunter Renfro. A lot of times they'll give him an option on where he wants to take a defender, depending on the leverage of that defender, whether he goes inside or outside. That time he's up against a veteran in Lawrence Austin, and he kind of gives him that stem to the inside, works to the outside, and Kelly Bryant unable to locate him. Tough conditions for the downfield shots. And now Spires on the punt. Tech still has 223 to work with. And that bounces out of bounds inside the 25. For the last time, we show you the AP poll. The college football rankings brought to you by PlayStation. The selection committee rankings will replace these yeah. next week. Big question is Ohio State, Penn State, where are they position Wisconsin? Manhandling Illinois teams are going to potentially make moves are these teams right here at least the committee you would think you're going to take a, 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 a Again, the, these rankings mean nothing to the committee the committee's going to right. come out with their own rankings It's not going to be if they come out. How in the heck is Wisconsin five on here? And I don't know seven with the, 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 the Committee's rankings how they drop down and you can't really compare anything on Tuesday to what you see there Benson Breaks a tackle and Benson out near the 45. That's really the, the second real productive run they've had tonight. Benson's kind of for both of them. And a, a very good read there by Marshall. It was a quick read. Farrell collapsed down on him. He had to get rid of that ball. Watch 99. He takes him. Look how quick that happens. If Farrell takes Benson, he pulls it out. Instead, he looks like he's going to take Benson. Instead, takes Marshall and it frees up the running back. off inside again. Benson was one of the guys who's outspoken this week. He said that Clemson will see a very different Georgia Tech team. He and the offensive players were really embarrassed by the way they played in last year's home loss to Clemson. Yeah, and when you make those kind of comments, the, the Clemson defense takes notes. And that, that carry right there at the end of it, Dorian O'Daniel, I think maybe read a few of those quotes. Because he become a, a target for a defense when you say things like that. Benson, such a huge part of the offense. When he went out against Miami in the sloppy conditions in the fourth quarter, they really struggled. And now, immediate pressure. Marshall just heaves into the bench. Or Daniel again just got on his face. But right when he threw it, Dorneo Daniel has been all over the field, just like he has the last three years against this offense. Brian to the outside, right as he throws it, right into the face. Dorneo Daniel with Marshall, and Marshall sensed it, fortunate enough to just get rid of that football. Not a big guy. Marshall's 180 pounds, and he, he was kind of off his feet up at his tiptoes when he threw the ball. <laughs> Daniel just yeah, slammed yeah. him backwards. And with Ben Boulware and others moving on from last year, oh, Daniel, we talked about him the last couple times we've had these games, really has taken on that leadership role. Marshall on third and seven, no chance. It was a slant, but Ricky June was well covered, and a look of frustration for the quarterback receiver wasn't where he expected him to be. But when you see a ball like that, 
That, that's an issue with the conditions and just not being able to get a good grip. I mean, we. And Marshall's a guy. He was so electric. You you were on the call with Reese that opener, his first career start. Rushes for 249 and five touchdowns against Tennessee right there, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And yeah, he had he's had other monster running games. The two teams that have contained him, Miami, and so far Clemson. It's a good punt. Beck's punting team has been outstanding tonight. Rolls dead at the one in the final minute. Caitlin Askew was able to bat it out of the end zone. So if you're Clemson and Kelly Bryant, just very cautious here. Don't give Tech any chance at a takeaway and go to the locker room up 18, get into the football to begin the second half. Yeah, with just a one timeout. Total yards, Kirk, 262 for Clemson. They have actually have more passing yards than the rushing yards so far. Coming in, they're one of the most balanced offenses in the country and, but, and tech just 110 total yards yeah with, without that passing game uh, to be able to help them out Clemson though if it comes to balance 20 runs 19 passes calls so there is some balance with their play calling I think they've been when they've had a successful drive I think they've done a really good job of mixing it up from the end zone on the shotgun Ryan just keeps it runs behind Feaster out to the five tech does have two timeouts they feel like they can stop the clock and force a punt. Use their first one. Paul Johnson will be will be disappointed on many fronts. You know he's he's tried to challenge his offensive line, his defensive line. He knows that you know, on paper they're they're facing some pretty stout linemen on both sides against Clemson but but that is where the battle so far has been lost for Tech I, I think yeah and, and I think also Clemson early in this game was able to control things based on field position the game just went their way early and it put Georgia Tech right away in a little bit more of a defensive mode from a play calling standpoint which is exactly where they don't want to be these conditions don't help their offensive style you can see their quarterback when they do throw the football Marshall's having a hard time getting a really good grip and throwing the ball so it's making it even that much harder for them to have that passing game. Feaster is fed. It's a good point about you know hand size. You know, Marshall is a converted A back or running back, not a natural thrower. Bryant has big hands, has handled the wet football very well in these tough conditions, throwing it tonight. And Tech will spend their final timeout, 45 seconds, as the Tigers face a third and two. Is the progressive pylon camp check, check the landing in that See last that? here. Yeah, that, that left that, ankle. Well, that, that's what worries you when you have an ankle at, at any moment, especially as much as he runs the football. He's already carried it 11 times tonight. They told us they were going to call the game as if he's 100 percent. And we all get that and really appreciate and respect that. But you're one defense alignment landing in the awkward way away from that ankle going back to square one. And now you're in recovery mode and now all of a sudden you're out of the game. And Cooper is into the game. Yeah, Zara Cooper is the backup who had to try unsuccessfully to rally the team against Syracuse. He is not the same kind of dynamic runner at all. I wonder how much they will run Bryant with this this lead in the second half. They feed Feaster who is hammered short. So Georgia Tech able to stop them. Fontavious Glanton made the tackle. They can't stop the clock, however. So Clemson will I actually even have to punt the ball here. Clock will just run out. Clemson deferred, so they get the football to start the second half. So Kelly Bryant, they get the takeaway very quickly. Touchdown pass to Kane, a terrific first half for the Clemson quarterback. He throws for 143, runs for 62. 21-3 Tigers at halftime. End of the half here in Clemson, Death Valley. Stay tuned for the halftime report right after these messages. The home team in front 21 3. We welcome you back to Saturday Night Football presented by Walmart in this presentation of the ACC on ESPN. Defending national champions lead at 21 3 over Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech not very effective Kirk on early downs so the third downs are mostly long 
only converted one of eight, only had 27 plays, and more than half their 27 plays were zero or negative yardage. Comes to defense dominating. Yeah, and you, you think about how you get back into this game if you're Georgia Tech. First of all, Ted Roof's defense has got to be able to make some stops. they got to be able to get the, off the ball back to their offense. And then, like, like, you always go back and think about Paul Johnson. It's about being able to stay on schedule, being able to run that option, coming up with a couple answers at halftime that can find a way to slow down the big defensive front seven from Clemson. ETN bobbling the kickoff, and he will be spun around and dropped back at the 11. The Pacific Life game summary looking at the excellent start from Kelly Bryant. Second play of the game for the Clemson offense after the fumble recovery. Goes a touchdown pass to Kane, and then later on he finds Milan Richard. As a runner, he was effective too. Absolutely. 11 carries, just getting, being able to do a lot of different things. More importantly, what doesn't show up the stats, just in really good command and back in a rhythm offensively. You can see seven tackles for a loss, getting a lot of penetration, making it very, very tough for Marshall in this offense. Just a light rain falling now, so much better conditions for the offenses. They hand it off to Feaster, who makes a cut and slams for about 10 on first down. To Maria. Well, Chris Davo Sweeney, we talked about Kelly Bryant and whether or not we were going to see double digit carries in the second half. And he said, We're going to do whatever it takes to win. We have to treat this game like the Super Bowl, especially coming off of that loss. And I know that's something that you guys were talking about in the first half, but he's most happy with this team on third down. But there's the fumble. The ball is out. Clemson retains possession. Feaster coughed it up, but Tyrone Crowder, the guard, alert. The big fella, 6'2, 340. Alert jumps on top of that football. Second time we've seen a Clemson running back have that ball taken out. Just a great effort by St. Amour to rip that football out of the hands of Feaster. Look at that. Ball is out clearly. That's the kind of takeaway that Tech really needs the short field to try to carve into the lead. Instead, nine yard gain, and now Bryant throws back. And taken off is Ray Ray McLeod. McLeod slips a tackle. Still fighting and moves it into Tech territory. Big gain on second and one. You know what he did, does a really good job of? And he, he, he was patient. He waited for the lineman. Watch the lineman get out there. And instead of just running to the outside, he cuts back in to where those the, the convoy of offensive linemen are. And now they're going to just push those defensive backs around and picks up huge yards. You get 22 there. C.J. Fuller back in the game. That often means they're going to throw. And they give it to Kane, who is wrestled down. Fuller is the best pass protector. So when you see him go in there, sometimes it means they want the experience back to take care of the blitz. Kane gets eight yards. Comes in attacking. Attack mode continues. And they flip it on the end around. This is Amari Rogers. We talked about some speedy, true freshman. Second time he's carried the ball tonight. First down. He's a good-looking uh, young receiver in the mold of a Ray Ray McLeod. I think even even thicker and stronger. Dad, of course, T. Martin, the offensive coordinator at USC, former great at Tennessee. Fuller, rare carry, barrels for a short game. Yeah, you got. Rogers, who is T. Martin's son, and then T. Higgins is his classmate, fellow true freshman, named for the former Tennessee quarterback, Trojans play caller. So Clemson threatening to build the lead now. Seventh play of this drive coming up. Fuller barrels into the secondary, into the red zone. As they continue to grind away on that small tech front. Offensive line does a very good job controlling that line of scrimmage. That was a run pass option. He's eyeing the safety as he puts the ball into the, into the belly of that running back. Safety stayed back. He handed it off. And now Bryant over the top. Payne just off the fingertips. He was caught up with Durham early in the route. And it was close. That, 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 again, I always talk about Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott and, and this whole offensive staff do such a good job of taking advantage of what the defense gives you just off the fingertips. But those safeties start to come down because of that running game. 
chances are here they're going to go right behind those safeties with a one-on-one -on -one chance. Fuller tracked down, up, still fights, but will not get back to the line of scrimmage. CJ Fuller, Antonio Simmons and Steph Durham combined third and long now. This red zone area was a concern against Syracuse. They get into the red zone area three times, didn't score a touchdown. Tonight they've been more efficient with their opportunities. See what they do here on this third down. Bryant has a clean pocket, plenty of time. Now flips it off short. Take it a hard hit. His choice will be fourth and about four. I don't know if we will see a field goal attempt. Choice took that hit, or the two Georgia Tech <laughs> players hit each other. Jalen Johnson with a big hit there, but I think he ended up almost. Victor Alexander, watch the two white helmets. Boom, yeah, they hit each other. Now here's Alex Spence. The competition was opened in the bye week because Spence has really struggled. Just two for six, and beyond 30 this year, one for four. He's the guy that took over when Greg Kugel. Ripped up his knee in a practice injury. And Spence able to convert at Samson. No drama. And Dabo said, hey, Gummins, we made us a field goal. 24-3. Is that what he said? I don't <laughs> think he said it quite that way, but he's happy. <laughs> Dad, Gummins. Been some field goal misadventures at Clemson. This Will Sweeney, Dabo's son, gets the high snap down. And Spence, three of seven. Dabo saying, we just got to make the layups. I don't care about the three-pointers. He's excited. He said, hallelujah. You can read his <laughs> lips there. <laughs> I ain't interested in the three-pointer. Let's just make the layups. Well, it was sort of a layup. And it stretches the lead to 21. Spence will kick it off now. Yeah, they brought in Drew Costa kind of basically off the campus. He had been on the team to try to push Spence in practice. And he and another guy, Christian Grooms, they were rotating. Each guy was getting kind of equal reps. But Spence keeps the job and makes the kick. Katro kind of makes something happen on the return. He's a hard running returner, a physical returner out near the 28. Tuesday, Reese, Kirk, you and the whole posse will be there at 7 o'clock Eastern time on, on Halloween. I guess you have to. Take time out from answering the doorbell for trick or treats to break down the first playoff committee rankings. There, I go out with the young lads. I still have one, one. I still got one of the four, four boys. Okay. The other, the other three of three hooligans. I don't know what they're up to, but the the the, the young and Chase, he'll, he'll be out there. They're into the tricks, and the other ones just <laughs> right. treats. Exactly. And the option, no pitch. And he's swarmed under by J.D. Davis. You know, Paul Johnson was telling Maria, he put a lot of the blame in the first half on his quarterback. He didn't like the way he was reading it. Yeah, he, he, and we saw a few examples of that in the first half. When he comes to reading it, it's not just the quarterback pitching it off of the defensive end to, to truly run this offense well, which Marshall has done a very good job of most of this year. A lot of it is the interior. The dive read is where you need to be consistent to give yourself a very good chance of executing. I do. Thanks to Don play, not much of a game. You concur with the option, Master Johnson, that, that Marshall made a, a number of a poor reads in the well, first. Well, here's half. an example of it right here. This is this is a read right here. If he collapses, you pull the ball. If he stays wide, you give it. What does he do? He's got to watch his eyes. He he takes the back. That's when you pull it out. He gave it. There's a misread. Those split second decisions you have to make in this offense. And under the pressure of the moment and with a bunch of monsters closing in fast, Marshall not having a great night in that department. Hasn't been a great night throwing the ball either, and he is going to be swarmed under. It's a short gain on third down. Leland Farrell stopped the quarterback. Here comes another punt. And Farrell did kind of a, a fishing thing. It reeled him in there yet again. <laughs> yeah, he used that wingspan, 6'5", 260. They bring the pressure. That's what Brent Venables, he, when he has gotten Marshall, into those third and obvious situations in the pass game, he's not taking it easy on him. He said, let's come after him. He doesn't like the pressure. It affects his eyes and his reads and really affecting him and his execution in the pass game, too. And it's the sixth three and out. Terrific night for Presley Harvin, the third. He's been, he's been doing all he can with the punts. He drives McLeod back to the 15, and that's where the Tigers will start. Crew members, kids celebrating Halloween, including Ariana, Derek Fidel's daughter. 
Osborne about six weeks ago. Welcome, to Mariana. Yeah, that's great. Just in time for Halloween. So Brian and the Tigers driving for a field goal in their first possession of the second half. Yeah, but after an effective punt at the 16. Feaster. Excuse me, that's ETN in there. A quick burst. What is he? Have? He had such a burst. I know he fumbled the ball earlier, but I love that they keep giving him his opportunities. He is a guy that one guy misses, he's gone. That time they fake it to him, and Brian is able to escape. They were honed in on the young guy that time, made a beeline, and Brian was able to squirm free and move the sticks. Keep talking about Marshall and his reads. That time, Brian. Since what you did, Antonio Simmons blowing up ETN and he pulls the ball out, picks up the first down. That's a good read there by Kelly Bryant. And you feed Travis again and runs into heavy traffic. Antonio Simmons is down on the field after making the tackle. Having a really good year coming into tonight, the senior at Jacksonville. One of their best pass rushers. Yeah. They haven't been able to get to Bryant tonight. No sacks yielded by this Clemson offensive line. He's kind of trying to stretch out his lower back. It's a veteran defense. There are a whole bunch of seniors. Really, the entire defense is seniors and juniors. Simmons out of Jacksonville. It's Lawrence Austin. It's been a quiet night for him. He's the alpha of this defense, the leader, one of the dedicated workers. Really tries to pretty much stay in the whole game if he can. They've worked around him, haven't they? The Clemson sure have. Offense. I, yeah, Austin has uh, had a brilliant career. 5'9", 187 pounds, came in with his twin brother, Lance Austin. Both guys have played a lot of football. Lawrence is kind of that alpha that we talked about earlier, not of the entire defense. Another short completion. T. Higgins able to fight forward and pick up about eight. Third down coming up. So you love to see a, a big, tall, lanky receiver, 6'4, 200 pounds, true freshman, is a little bit of shake after the catch. Instead of just a four yard gain, he's defender trying not to give up the big play, backs off of him, and he's able to get around him now and set up this third and short. The motion eats the end to the far right. Third down. Bryant looks for a quick throw, and it's incomplete. It was not accurate. Thrown behind Higgins, and it's fourth down. Pretty big hit there to clean it up by Victor Alexander, just to make sure that the young freshman did not come up with that. It's a good job by Simmons, and the big hit there by sure Victor was. Alexander. Clean, Dave Kataya. Dave Kataya says clean. We haven't gotten Davey in yet. I heard he had an interesting adventure getting here to Death Valley. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right after this play. <laughs> Spires to punt. We haven't had much controversy tonight for Dave. No, you haven't. Spires, he's a rugby style, just kicks it low along the ground, and it's going to roll. Dead. If Dave could have thrown a flag or rejected certain airline personnel on his journey here, he would have been able to have done that. Absolutely. We'll take a break. <laughs> Unsportsmanlike. <laughs> well, tomorrow morning at ESPN Sunday NFL Countdown, we're going to have an all-access look with Carson Wentz, who's helped the Eagles to the best record in the NFL, the former North Dakota State Bison quarterback, having a terrific start. Unbelievable. Great start. And then Broncos Chiefs on Monday Night Football, 8.15 Eastern Time, available in Espanol on ESPN2. How about the Clemson defense just dancing? You're, you're Georgia Tech. You're down 24 to 3. You got to look over there and see the monsters over there dancing. <laughs> Rotated in a backup or two on that defensive front. And now is a first down attempt to throw as Marshall's going to look downfield, but double coverage on Ricky June and no chance. See, there aren't a lot of receivers that are in their routes, and so it's a lot of <laughs> That's it. That's during the timeout. Here they slip. This is swag surfing. All right. Those, those guys. A roommates or actually uh, Wilkins is not one of the guys who, who rooms with 
Yeah, Lyons and Cleland Farrell and Dexter Lawrence. He says he's like the fifth roommate. He doesn't pay any rent, but he's always over there raiding the fridge, yeah. playing their video games. Playing video games. It's a given. They know how to enjoy themselves on and off the field. So incomplete on first down. You got to hand it off, and Benson going nowhere. It's another third and long. They're, they're just caught in this trap again and again, Kirk. What, what, what Brent Venables is doing is he's really doing a good job of slanting the defensive line on the back side. It's so hard for Shamir Devine again at 6'7, 280. Watch the right guard. He's just a step late. Wilkins is quick as a cat. No matter who he's going up against, and no matter what system he's going against, it's 6'4", 300 pounds. They slant it at the perfect time. <laughs> I like that call. We got the get back coach. We're going oh, yeah. again. Oh, yeah. Get him. Get him he's, he's as intense as anybody in the ballpark. I'm telling he is. He's ready. Third and 10. For once, there's not pressure until now. Marshall cannot escape. He'll be sacked by O'Daniel. Another three and out. Watch, watch Coach Venables after this one. Oh, and he, he, he's hurt, I think, too. You know, he's got an injury. Oh, oh he goes down. He's, oh, my gosh. You could pull a groin that he's way. He's already got an injury from earlier in the year. He's, he's going he's gonna to fight through it, I think. Get back coaches there clapping. He's got to somebody get a trainer what, over there. Get back coach. What, what about the get the get the field clear of debris coach? Almost, what, did he, what did he step on there? Got the best of it. He's going to walk it off, though. Was it was that the thing where I think it was the marker that where the uh, the, the, the sticks are? Yeah. yeah see if Maria can get an injury report on Venables. That's a short punt, <laughs> and it's going to roll dead yeah, eventually at the 36-yard line. That came after that call too. You had the hand underneath <laughs> underneath the chin. <laughs> uh, he's trying to walk it off. I asked him if he hurt. Yeah, he said he's already on an injury coming in I said you get hurt because I asked him if he ran option this week in practice to simulate Georgia Tech and he said no nah, I'm kind of banged up I said too many squats he goes no nah, man I'm staying off the legs the heavy legs I'm just more of a runner I lift the upper body heavy he sometimes he actually is the scout team quarterback oh, yeah run on the other team stuff to make sure he gets a very close vantage point on his guys in practice he may be on the show be the only guy doing that McLeod comes in motion, but Bryant looking to throw. Takes a shot downfield. It's Kane! Incomplete. That's all. And here comes the flag. Did he shove off there? I, I think it is. I, I, did, I saw it the very last second. It looked to me like he pushed off at the end to get separation. And they have the ball in his hands after making what, what, that move. Watch at the very, at the very Best last Bears. second. Ball's in the I'll air. The yep. Right there, that push. Move it all the way back. Johnny Kerr is one of the defensive backs who was defending there. That they're using different guys. They're thin back there. Kerr is a freshman and is checking to the ball game. First and 25. McLeod on the pop pass. Hurdles one man gets some of the yardage back to the 42. The thing you got to love, what I love about this offense is how different all these receivers are. They all bring just, and this is the way they recruited them, they all bring something just a little bit different to the offense and, and to the attack. Guy who's had a really quiet night is, is Hunter Renfro. He's the top receiver on this team, limited to just one catch. TD Roof, by the way, it's Ted Roof's. Son, the freshman linebacker on the pressure there. Yeah, he came free, did a good job of disguising the blitz, and then in, ended up coming late. Good looking, true freshman. 5'11, 205 pounds. This is good look at his dad there. So it's third and 16. Better get there's yeah, they better get back. Is one of the tech linebackers they creeped up well off sides. Does get back before the snap. Brian throws near side, incomplete. The cloud was bracketed there. Fourth down. And go back to that pass interference. Even a great offense like Clemson, tough time overcoming a 15-yard penalty. Another brilliant Clemson defensive performance so far. 
against this triple option that hurts so many defenses. They, Venables, one with a bunch of very talented defenders. They, they've, they've got the book. They, they've got Tech figured out. Brad Stewart hoping to have a chance to return the Spires punt, but it's a low one again and will just bounce dead at the 25 yard line. Well, tonight's Wells Fargo Innovations, technological innovation changing college football. This is not necessarily an innovation. This is just a bunk bed built for a 350 pounder. But what's under the mattress and under the mattresses of all the thumbs and players is this device that senses the distance between heartbeats, measures the heartbeats. It can tell you if you're getting a good night's sleep. I need that. If you're restless, each player's data is monitored on the phone. They, they are provided the opportunity to share with the coaches. Strongly encouraged to do that. They're big believers in this. Alabama does the thing. Oklahoma State uses the same system. Kelly started that yeah. back at Oregon. You big, are you a deep sleeper? I'd like to have it tested. I'd like to I know. I would, too. Yeah. Benson's been the only effective runner. He's, he's rushed for now 127 yards. Kirk, the rest of the team combined? Yeah. Minus nine rushing. What's strange about that is typically when that when that fullback is able to get yards, 127, that usually makes the defense collapse down on him and opens up the perimeter run with the quarterback and the and their pitch backs. We haven't seen that at all. And it's the only thing that's working. The Tigers keying in on it. It's it's very, very rare to see this offense do nothing on the perimeter. I know this the track is sloppy, but they haven't been able to get to the edge one time. No. No, they're, 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 they're not. They don't have the ability to get outflanked, to outflank the uh, the Clemson defense. De their defense, you know, they are a lot of times slanting, angling, trying to take away the inside part, and then they have defensive backs getting off of blocks. The discrepancy there in third downs because they've been the third and long most of the time. This is a this is their wheelhouse, third and three. Increasing urgency for Tech to do something with this possession. Play clock down at two. Marshall pitches, and Lynch will not get there. Drop for a loss as Isaiah Simmons, the freshman safety, came up and made the play. Fourth down again. Well, you, you also have Skalski right here. He's going to run, and here's the safety that you talked about, the freshman Simmons. Watch these guys fly to the football, defend this inside to the outside. Linebacker Skalski gets there, but also Simmons is able to get off of a block and help out. Good looking freshman, Isaiah Simmons. Bounced right off the block, didn't he? Man, 6'3, 225. I said to Brent Venables, who was in Norman, reminds me of a young Roy Williams. Remember Roy Williams at Oklahoma? It's a big back statement. In the day. I think he's that kind of guy. He's got a increased role in this offense. There's Renfro making the catch at the 24. We'll go backstage pass and take a look at this unbelievable new Thompson facility that opened in January. That is a, a wiffle ballpark God, I wish in I was the there. backyard of that facility. It's next to the putt-putt golf course. That's the brand new building where the weight room is and all the coaches' offices. And inside, that's where those bunk beds were. They got pool and ping pong and a couple of bowling lanes. Do the virtual reality golf swing? I did not do that. But I think I would did break you do the, the slot? Did you do the slide? There's a slide from the from the second floor down to the first floor yeah. the players they, take. And they use that every day. They have a, every day. Have a mock up of the running down the hill, a miniature Howard's Rock, and you can run down the carpet <laughs> if you want to. Talk about a recruiting tool. This is ETN running left. ETN so dangerous if he can get past that first line. Picks up a nice game. Tigers acting like they still want to play with some tempo here. Up, up three they scores. are. They absolutely are. That whiffle ball feels something to see in it. That's, that's your that's your sport, right? Yeah, I love that. So you take on all comers. ETN. Lights out near midfield. The coaches and the players had a wiffle ball game and it opened and Davo Sweeney was proud of saying that the coaches with uh, you know, Bill Spires, who was a former major leaguer for 15 years and coached the tight ends here, they yeah. brought it. He came out in his Astros uniform. They had kind of a ringer. And Hunter Renfro is kind of the, the, as a former excellent high school baseball player, he's kind of yeah. the leader of the players team. But coaches got him. Coaches got him. Wow. 
Tell you the guy, Thad Turnipseed, was really the guy that got that facility done on time. The last time a project that you knew of this way, that magnitude gets done on time. They worked hard, and it's it probably is. I've never I've never heard of that any of the projects I've personally been involved ever. In. I've never experienced that. Oh, snap gets away. Bryant boots it now, picks it up on the hop, and just runs out of bounds for a huge loss. No, that was just. It, it, it wasn't just the snap. You, there got, you had a receiver going in motion. I don't know if the ball hit him. It looked, I think it did. I mean, it, it, it was just poorly timed with Kelly Bryant telling the receiver, I think it was Amari Rogers, yeah, hits him. And Bryant, lucky he's, the ball didn't bounce the other way. He's hey. able to get his hands on it. He kind of scooped it once with his hands and then finally picked it up on the hop. So that's Rogers, Second freshman, mistiming it. Second and 25. Pass is incomplete out of the hands of Thompson. Again, a little loss of focus here. Final minute of the third quarter. Again, one of those run pass options for Kelly Bryant. Could have handed the football off if he chose to to Fuller, but instead liked what he saw out on the edge. But give Georgia Tech a lot of credit for being able to make a play there. It was Lawrence Austin in coverage. Third and forever. The Jackets rush three. Downfield shot and incomplete. Overton defended there by Kerr. No flag. Well, well, Overton puts his hands on him initially, and then and then he just grabs onto him. And they kind of lock hands right there. That, that pull there at the end is, I think, what the reaction is. And they could have definitely made the call there. But Kerr, one of those guys who's not even on the two deep who's pressed into duty here the freshman in coverage good news for the fans who hung around through the bad weather it looks like the rain has just about stopped Flyers again goes rugby style and fielding it on the hop is Stewart scampers along the sideline for a short return our buddy Dalton Stickler, Hanover, Pennsylvania, made his picks. 11-year-old lines up all the FBS helmets. He's a big Penn State fan. He saw the very top of the left column there on the right side. He picked the Lions, knock off the Buckeyes. Right and there, missed right? that one. And he did have he did have Clemson. That's the He's got right Clemson below. there. He's got Oklahoma. I wonder who he had in the Iowa State game Tech and, and TCU. He See tend, that one, Fallon, on the board he there? He tends to go uh, with the favorites a lot. Where is that? Uh, where is that Cyclones helmet? You know, Billy Bennell is trying to tell me. I, I can't find that. I just see. Put that back up. Right. If, he, if he called that upset, I'd be impressed. Now that is uh, Matthew Jordan who's now come in at quarterback. Paul Johnson giving his backup a chance. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm sorry, Chris. I just wanted to no, see. Man, you, no, he did not. He did not call the Cyclones upset. Not, not many did. What do you think of this? I think Devon Marshall's had a very, very frustrating now. Now Paul Johnson's going to go with Matthew Jordan, Jr., who's in his fourth year in the program and has very, very little game experience. And Jordan with the keeper up near the first down marker. Now that expression on, on the face of Marshall says it all. He had a terrific season, but a very rough night. And the Yellow Jackets going to a backup for the fourth quarter, which is coming up after this message and a word from your local ABC station. So Taquan Marshall lifted as the Clemson defense putting a huge dent in that average yards per game rushing, which was 117 coming in, minus six tonight. For yeah, just a, a, a great effort. We knew coming in, it, it's been a challenge for Georgia Tech to move the ball against Clemson, and that continues again, third straight year. And Jordan, whose keeper gave the Yellow Jackets just their fourth first down of the game, gets his fifth. And, and, and this is something that the coach uh, had a chance to talk to Maria and said, we missed some reads. This is a dive read that he misreads. This is a time where the defender collapses down. He should have pulled it out, and he didn't. And then it's, you know, he's got an opportunity to maybe pitch the ball here to get it to the outside to Lynch and holds on to the football. And I think that's the thing that Paul Johnson said, you know, we got to sit you down. It's one of those nights. Let's give Matthew Jordan a chance to execute. And Jordan again going to keep it. 
He's a guy that was the backup the starter Justin Davis for for three Justin Thomas Justin for three Thomas, years yeah. and he got in against the Hokies last year and and Jordan actually played really well St started the game and now he's going to limp off so Marshall better grab a helmet and trot back out he goes down before he can make it to the sidelines yeah, he's a Take another look at the tackle. See if you can see what happened. Completely different running style with Matthew Jordan from Taquan Marshall. Boy, you, you wait all season to you chance to get in there. Competed with Marshall for the starting job. That was just about decided when Marshall went crazy in the opener against Tennessee. And yeah, Jordan's just gotten there in, in mop up duty. Frustrating. I think his ankle just got caught up underneath the tackle. So Marshall back in on second and seven. Jordan carried it all four plays on the drive so far. And now Marshall went into the right, chased, harassed. Oh, Daniel. Once again, he is a nightmare for this option offense. A fourth straight year he's had a big night against it. Absolutely. And, and it's the penetration. Taquan, Taquan Marshall's got to just cut that underneath. Take his losses. Take a one-yard loss instead of turning it around and trying to outrun this Clemson defense. It's a holding penalty it, the Tigers defense. So that'll nullify what would have been their eighth tackle for loss of this game. And it's going to move the ball down inside the 35 yard line. Holding defense number one. So Mullen downfield as Venables is in disbelief. Expression. Well, especially after a big loss. Yeah. And it would have been third and forever. And they're off the field. He is so frustrated. He's bouncing off people over there. And Marshall, pump fake, ducks under, and dives back near the line of scrimmage. Trey Lamar harassed him. But well, he's fired up. I think him and his. What does he call him? The pullback guy? That's the uh, get back coach. Get back coach. Yeah. He he. They must have a, a kind of an understanding that I'm going to elbow you. I'm going to hit you. I'm going to give you a lot of the business, and we can be friends after the game. But I. He gets he gets pretty aggressive. I asked him what goes through your mind because you're pretty demonstrative down there. He's like I'm just playing the play. Well, this is great. Second and eleven. <laughs> pretty calm throughout the play. Boom. Up, up the middle there quick hitter for Jerry Howard he's the true freshman backup to Benson as the B back it's third down now it's a contest to who, who can get farther out in the field Venables or Paul Johnson likes to sneak out there when he's calling the offensive plays as well he's pushing people back get back coach and this is a feels like kind of a, a last gasp possession protect that that holding penalty and Clemson gave them some life here. Feel like they've got two plays to get the three yards. Keeper, another tackle for loss by Dorian O'Daniel, who just flexes after the play. It's fourth down. It's a good job again by Clemson's defense getting some penetration. Taquan Marshall. And from up here, he's trying to make those reads. Split second decisions. May have had a chance to hand that off again to Jerry Howard and run the football up the middle, but instead held on to it and Clemson all over him. Fourth and three. Jackets desperately need to make something of this drive. Option look, pitch late, and catching it was Cottrell. He's got a first down. That was a crucial conversion right in front wow. of Venables. Wow. Great effort just to catch the pitch. It was. And somehow, I mean, look at the defensive speed. This is slow developing. You've got three guys out there chasing it down. He catches it and somehow gets that ball across the line. Clemson might want to have them buzz down and take a look at that spot. Haven't had a replay review yet tonight. Tom Zamorski, the replay official, they bring the chains across. Coutrell, as you said, was working hard to collect the, yeah, I mean, the pitch and then fight forward, but he his hip was down very close yeah. to the marker. The pitch, the pitch was in front of him. 
It's another look. Catches it. Where does he go down? Right. Clemson is challenging the rolling on the field. Not yet. Right. The Plus the knee. There. And the you can ball. See. It looked like to me his left knee was down even before his hip. Except left knee down there. Yeah, we will take a break while they review this to see if Tech can keep possession down by three touchdowns. Replay official Tom Zmorski has overturned the call on the field. Clemson makes the stop on fourth down. As natural rule just short we'll here from Dave Katine. We'll show you how to look again. That was complicated a little bit in the end around. Toss made and a short gain. Dave, let's take a look. Because it was the elbow, it was the hip, it was the knee of Cockrell they were looking at. Well, you take a look, you take a look at that elbow, and when that elbow's down, you'll see it right here. All right, now the elbow's down right now, and you can see the ball is short of that gold line. I mean, the gold line's not official, okay, but it clearly looks short, and it was the right call. Some Clemson defensive players <laughs> celebrating after that fourth down stop. And now Adam Choice as the Tigers. Grind away up by three touchdowns. Great effort, though. Yeah, by Cocker wasn't yeah, it? just to sure keep was. the play alive. Yeah, sure was. One of the bonuses here when we come to Death Valley, when we have those controversial calls, is we're we're among the people here, mm. and so they always like to turn and they're within the earshot here, letting us know what they think about the, the call, and they want to get the inside information. We're right next the people. One, to the one, one we're the right next was, to the replay one booth One of the over people here. Was, was kind enough to, he threw us a lollipop. <laughs> oh, yeah, or I didn't get a lollipop. at us, I don't oh. know, to us or at us in the first <laughs> half. That was a little treat. <laughs> Third and four, Brian back and delivers complete, reaching but not getting first down yardage is Cornell Powell. And so the Tigers will send out the punt I team. mean, you, you can see here, I mean, we're, we're right here. Hey, here, give me a high five real quick. Thank you. I mean, we're right there. <laughs> we're right here. You can mess up the hair. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're right here with the. They turn around. They want to know yeah, what the call is. They pay extra for these tickets, or is it cheaper to be this close and be bothered by us? <laughs> bothered by us. <laughs> There's Darwin Brown up here on the big screen. There he is. Mike Black. Mike Demento. David Katai. We got the whole crew up here. up here. We're in the fourth quarter. We're stumbling around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's interesting this this ACC you know Georgia Tech is going to is going to drop way to the back burner if they can't come back here Miami in the coastal undefeated and we'll, we'll talk about the, the Clemson NC State game it's an intriguing game in Raleigh next week as we come back after this timeout. You were missed last night, Kirk. That's Mad World nearby Piedmont, South Carolina. <laughs> As I look over my no, shoulder, no, we, both did not, ways. we did not bring somebody in this time. It was, <laughs> I, I got Dave now. Dave on one side and Darren on the other blocking. A, no, it'll be tough to top two years ago in Philadelphia. Oh, uh, yeah. You <laughs> outdid yourself there. <laughs> Spires back. He's been, he's been a little bit busy. The tech defense has done a lot better after halftime, limiting. Clemson to just a field goal. It's a heck of a both punters have done a tremendous job tonight. Owen Curtis and the All State All Hands in bus navigating down here to Clemson. Who's your All Hands in Team of the Week? Well, we do this every single week in Ohio State. The All Hands in Team of the Week down most of the game, didn't give up, trailed by 18 in the second half. How about that? The largest comeback by an Urban Meyer team, JT Barrett, 423, wow. 16 straight completions to finish the game. And they held Saquon Barkley to under 50 yards for the game on five yards in the second half. And it doesn't include the kickoff return, but right. you said before the game and before the last couple of drives, that would help define Barrett's career because he's taken some meat for not coming up big with the pass game in big games. Desperately needed a pass play here. Marshall has to just heave it into the bench. They just had no chance. Talk about the, the two stars, Barkley. Had that electric moment to open the game. He was limited as a runner and a receiver. And Barrett, those are just ridiculous. Yeah. When they throw the ball downfield, well, it, things can happen. When they play with some urgency. Talking, it, was, it was a little bit of urgency because of being down in the clock. And it just all of a sudden they're throwing the ball vertically and making some big plays. His receivers helped him out. And and they also had that the 12th man. That home crowd was about as loud as I've ever heard it today. Tigers jumping around on this second down and ten play and 
and test the middle again, and it's a very short game. Howard. It's a, a man, he, this, this is going to be one of those games, Chris, sorry to interrupt you, but Taquan Marshall, we already showed you a package of him misreading. And I, I just don't know if these defense alignment are coming in so quickly, they're, they're surprising him. Uh, but that's another misread. They, they, they took the fullback away. He's got to be able to pull that out and take it down to the pitch back, to take it to the, uh, the pitch read, and he's handing it off. Straight back on third and eight. They dump it out short. Howard trying to make a play here, and he is able to finally, with the pass game, a productive, positive play. That's their first of the night, and they get a first down. Here we are with 8.20 to go in the, in the game. He just, this time, he just baits Van Smith to safety. He brought pressure from the perimeter, and once he was able to get it over top of that pass rush, there's nobody left, and it's a good time to call that by Paul Johnson. And the 15-yard gain gets him into positive yardage with the pass game. They got nine now. First down again, a brief look downfield, and now Marshall takes off and scampers across the 40. J.D. Davis takes him out. Here's our Pacific Life game summary and quarterback comparison. Brian from the first couple of snaps has been brilliant tonight for the Tigers. And if you're just tuning in or haven't seen Kelly Bryant coming off that Syracuse game, he had the gimpy ankle, has looked great all night, not only throwing the football, he's also been able to run the ball tonight 12 times, 67 yards, and has really been back to his old self despite these conditions with the heavy rain and the sloppy field. Well, four yards on first down is something to celebrate for the Tech offense tonight. And now Marshall hesitating, didn't pitch it, and he is dropped right there by Isaiah Simmons. Well, you've got to you've got to attack downhill and make the, the pitch read, make it a quick decision. Here he's just kind of waiting, 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 waiting. And that Clemson defender, I, to me, Jalen Williams, 30, does a good job of just trying to just string that out and make him indecisive and let the rest of that defense led by Isaiah Simmons eventually get there. But Jalen Williams is a heck of a play there. Isaiah just dancing around. He, he brings the lumber too. He, he is a oh, hard hitter at 225. Old school type of safety. Big, big safety. And he's six on third down. And Howard banging ahead. This time converts as a runner as they get into Number Clemson 15, territory. Jeremy Howard picks up the first down. Howard doesn't get a, a lot of carries because Benson is so good, but he has relieved Benson. I'm not sure if, if Cravante is injured or just worn out from his big night, but Howard has become the V-back who's featured now. Yep, true freshman. See, Benson, he doesn't look like he's done for the night. Maybe just giving Howard a chance to get some, get some touches. Marshall looking to throw and just has to fire it at the feet. Niles Pinckney is a backup defensive tackle who leaked through there. But they are rotating all night long. A lot of different players on that front seven. We're seeing more than we usually are in that, that yeah. department, aren't we? Yeah. I think a lot of that has to do with the type of offense that they're facing. You know, Brent Venable's telling us that they get ready for Georgia Tech a little bit in the spring, a little bit in the fall camp. They don't do it every week the way maybe Georgia might or some of the other teams, but they definitely, because it's such a different offense to prepare for, they sprinkle it in throughout the spring and fall. And there's the pitch. Castro collects it. It's hit hard. Simmons again comes up and one with Skalski knocked down the ball carrier. I asked, I asked uh, Coach Venables, who, is, who are those next linebackers besides the, the players that you have playing quite a bit? And he talked a lot about Skalski. He loves Six feet, 240 pounds, plays with a lot of speed. Chad Smith is another one. Skalski is a guy that just tells on special teams as well. Smart guy, instinctive player. He's got good linebacker ink on that left arm, too. Third and six. Marshall delivers out of the hands. That was one that Cottrell could have had. Fourth down. Finally get a chance for the quarterback to put the ball on the money and would have come up a little bit short of the first down more than likely maybe fourth and two but at least would have given him a little bit of a better chance. Another shake of the head from Johnson will keep the offense on the field on this fourth down. Johnson's a guy that he went for it and fourth down 
up eight against Miami at his own 35. It was short, and that's that time they didn't make it. This time on fourth and six, Marshall scrambles, had a man downfield, and the catch is made. Finally, they involve Ricky June, who just kept the feet inbound at the 22. Wow, that ball went up in the air. I didn't think it was going to come down in time before Ryan Carter maybe made a play on it to knock it down. He buys time here and just improvising, throws it up. I thought he might try to get it to Cersei, but instead goes a little further downfield to June. And June does a good job of staying inbounds, tiptoeing. But that ball, like I said, it kind of hung up there and almost gave Carter enough time to come back and knock it away. June, the senior, had more than half of the team receptions coming in makes his first tonight and now a downfield throw and that was actually broken up by the receiver Brad Stewart who prevented the interception by Trayvon Mullen great play by Stewart <laughs> playing defense there that's perfect position by Trayvon Mullen you know they are down Mark Fields Marcus Edmond hadn't played has not played at all this year and it's put Mullen in a position to be on the other side of Ryan Carter and that time outstanding position but a, a good job of knocking the ball away by the receiver Stewart rain beginning to fall again Marshall takes off he has some territory here to run and Taquan Marshall will scoop into the end zone touchdown Georgia Tech and that is of interest to many looking on 22 yard touchdown he roll half rolls this way and then watch the gap between the right guard here and the right tackle. He recognized that and just jumped it right away. Gets a good block downfield by Ricky June and finally gets into the end zone. There's a good look to make sure he got in from the progressive pylon cam. So and you get Renton King on for the conversion to cut it to 14. Right about where the experts predicted this game might finish, and it just kind of curls in there. 4.43 to play in a soggy night in Death Valley. Frustrated night for Marshall, finally able to find the end zone. Tonight on ESPN, after the USC Arizona State game, Sports Center at night. Take a look at the impact of. Losses by previously unbeaten Penn State and TCU. Kirk, you have your your top four. Do you, we have to wait for the reveal, or is that, oh, can, can you give us a sneak peek? I think you and I are going to give a collective effort on that top four. Jim McElwain's future at Florida after the Gators were walloped by the Dogs and cocktail party in Jacksonville. Gator fans drowning their sorrows. Dogs just worlds better than anybody in the SEC East. Looking forward to the Georgia Auburn. That's going to be a week. So then yeah, and Tech will have their chance to be a spoiler for Georgia's hopes. Yeah. yeah. In Atlanta. See if the Tech uh, team onside kicks. Now they'll boot it deep. And the cloud retreats to his 15 and just will take a knee to avoid any possibility of a fumble. Tigers up by 14, 438 to play. Well, Georgia just punished Florida. They, they barely bothered to throw a forward pass, didn't need to. They just ran over the Gators. Iowa State's defense holds TCU to seven. There were some crucial takeaways in that game. They've already beaten Oklahoma. Now TCU have Oklahoma State in a couple weeks. Notre Dame after the USC win last week takes care of NC State. Still have Miami and Stanford ahead of them. Ohio State with a big rally. Come True back freshman Kirk State. Hunter Johnson has come into the game for Clemson. Hands off to C.J. Fuller. So the freshman, uh, Brownsburg, Indiana, very hyped to recruit. Not. Not Zarek Cooper, who's the backup to that man, Brian, but given Johnson the look and Brian Caps just a terrific night. Great to see him come back and play the way he did. 12 carries, 67 yards, 22 with 33, and like I said, just back in rhythm. That's the way the Clemson offense you'd expect them to see. And kind of just expect them to be able to, to run where they're hitting on all cylinders and running and throwing with him leading the way. 
Johnson collects the high snap hands off and you know, Kelly Bryant's a junior so he's got another year ahead of him and after that you'd expect that the Hunter Johnson would be involved in a, in a competition to be the next guy but Bryant says this is my time right here and he's still leading over there. I was going to say uh, that tells you a lot about him and again go back to the culture that Dabo Sweeney has created here. We always brag on the Clemson defense when the first team guys come out how they coach the backups and take a lot of pride. You're seeing that now from Kelly Bryant who sometimes you see a starting quarterback taken out of a game where it's out of reach and they're on the sideline just talking to guys and seeing what maybe the plans are for later this evening and not <laughs> Kelly Bryant. He's locked in trying to help out his young quarterback. Fuller again. What do you make of the, the challenge of going to Raleigh NC State taking the non conference loss. They were they were handled by Notre Dame today but certainly a capable opponent a, a oh, yeah. threat for this team. Yeah I mean that, that, watching that game today I mean it was fairly competitive until the second half when Notre Dame hits hit a few big opportunities and capitalized on them but NC State in Raleigh conference game um, it'll be one of the bigger tests that I think Dabo Sweeney and his team has remaining on their schedule so they get into conference championship game. Fuller again after NC State they return home to take on this sounds odd but it's it's a fact the two and five two and five Florida State Seminoles who appeared to pack it in, in Boston yeah and what night. was not a good look Friday night look looking at their schedule and I, I don't know it off the top of my head but kind of wonder who they have left that they're going to be able to beat if they keep playing with the energy and attitude they played with last night they're going to be big dogs here <laughs> Oh, for sure. Yeah. Watching on ABC, the four wrap up show with Cassidy Hubbard is next. If you're watching on ESPN2 in the western part of the country, San Diego State takes on Hawaii following this game. First and 10, Adam Choice is the back and he takes the handoff. It's going to be a de facto. Atlantic Division Championship game in Raleigh next weekend. Wolfpack with two losses out of conference. Clemson with just that game and then the Florida State game. And then you got Virginia Tech at Miami. The Hurricanes also have Virginia and Pittsburgh on the road. But really, both ACC division titles figured to be decided next Saturday. Well, what a, what a scene that'll be in both those atmospheres. Virginia Tech just kind of a team that's like the stealth bomber of the ACC a little bit forgotten about but still in a great position you just saw the standings to be able to go on the road maybe and, and compete with Miami maybe beat Miami. I think the game next week in Raleigh would be a, a big showdown. It's Clemson on the road tough environment NC State I think thirsty to be able to have kind of a landmark win chance or opportunity so a lot at stake in both the uh, the divisions. Yeah the loss in South Bend doesn't hurt their chances. What can the Wolf Pack bring that would most trouble this Clemson team that is is firing on all cylinders tonight from the start offensively and defensively. Oh, great defense. You know, they, they've got a great defensive line that makes it tough to be able to run the football on them. They play a lot of man to man so there's opportunities to make big plays in the pass game but the other thing is they, they do a pretty good job with their offense with Ryan Finley. Not a conference game of course but South Carolina Boy, they're, they're hungry to get some payback and this rivalry has turned Clemson's way that game's in Columbia at the end of the season and again South Carolina what are they now six and two they don't they did beat they NC State they don't, I know yeah. I know they don't pass the eye test but you know what will <laughs> must champ they find ways to win games it's never pretty but they're winning again it's a high snap as Johnson pulls down and hands the ball off to choice and another first down for Clemson that should be just about it. Clemson scoring just the three points after halftime with the 21-3 lead. The touchdown they got late in the second quarter. That was more than enough to secure this one. Tuesday night we talked throughout this broadcast. The, uh, the rankings will come out. The committee gets together. They are going to have a fun chore week one of releasing those rankings. Other than Alabama and Georgia at one and two. Try filling out a ranking sheet. And give me three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine right now. It's tough. That's your job, partner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
some Clemson fans hoping that maybe a Tiger could break a tackle and find the end zone, but uh, clock ticking down to 40 seconds. Sweeney coaching down to the last snap. Still a lot of people interested in the 24 to 10 game. Those in the desert in particular. Johnson, the snap gets away. They've been flirting with that. The recent play is instead of just throwing it away, he's going to run out of bounds way back at the 44. The, the snaps have been coming high from Fasanelli, the, the center, lately. You know, Brian is 6'4 with long arms, and he's able to collect those high snaps. Johnson wasn't, and you can see that kind of execution, even though it's a third string quarterback. He wants the quarterback. He wants his quarterback, Hunter Johnson. Telling him you see the clock. He did not Stay want him to run bounds. out of bounds there. That, that could have been the last play of the game if he just falls down. So if they don't use a timeout, that, that little conference is going to cost him <laughs> delay a game. Well, he, he obviously is taking this uh, for a teaching moment over yeah. the delay a game call. Indeed. But they, they he's he's like Nick Saban and other guys and they continue to coach right down to the last. And by the way, with the with the raise that Sweeney got, he's making eight and a half million this year. He's second only to Nick Saban in salary. Now he's working the center over with the with the quarterback. That's look, it's like practice. Now the center's running out there with the quarterback. <laughs> yeah, he's doing pretty well with the. Uh, yeah, he's doing he's okay. Eight-year, fifty-four million dollar deal. It's it's basically not that they would, but it's basically impossible to get rid of him with the buyout. And his, his buyout, should he want to, somewhere, sometime down the line, go somewhere else, it isn't too bad. But he is very happy in Sam put right here. Twenty-four ten. Is the final Clemson over Georgia Tech?